Finishing up our discussion on the topic of gravitation, let's now have the examples part. Consider the following problem. You have sample problem number one. Figure shows an arrangement of three particles. You have the figure on the right. You have particle 1, M1, particle 2, M2, and particle 3, M3 arranged as shown. M1 has a mass of 6 kilograms, M2 and M3 have the same mass, 4 kilograms, and distance A is given to be 2 centimeters, so A and 2A. What is the gra net gravitational force experienced by M1 due to the other two forces? So M1, 6 kilograms, M2 is equal to M3 is equal to 4 kilograms, and A is equal to 2 centimeters, convert to meters. They're being asked to get the net gravitational force experienced by M1. Now, all our particles have masses, so they will interact with each other. Simply because they have masses, they will attract each other. As far as M1 is concerned, M1 will be attracted towards M2 with force F12 and M1 at the same time will be attracted to M3 with force F13. And the net gravitational force on M1 is just the sum of these two forces F12 plus F13. And since force again is a vector quantity Performing this addition, you need to you need to use your component method. So first, let's have x component, f net g x component, f net g x, x component of f12, f12 is vertical, no x component, f13 is horizontal, heading in the negative direction. So, horizontal, all of it is in the x component and negative direction. So, f net g is just equal to negative f13. f13 is gravitational force. So, it's just equal to g m1 m3 over 2a quantity squared, where 2a is the distance between m1 and m3. So, r in this case is 2a, so r squared is square of 2a. So, f net gx is equal to negative g m1 m3 over square of 2a. We know all these quantities. g is a constant, memorize niyo. m1, 6 kilograms. m3, 4 kilograms. a is 0 0.02 meters. We'll be able to calculate F net GX to be negative 1.0005 times 10 to the negative 6 newtons. Going now to the Y component, F net GY is equal to Y component of F12. F12 is vertical. All of it is in the Y component, positive direction. Whereas F13 is horizontal, no Y component. So F net GY is equal to F12 plus 0. F12 is also a gravitational force, so it's equal to G M1 M2 over A squared, where A is the distance between M1 and M2. So R in this case is A. So R squared is A squared. So F net GY is equal to G M1 M2 over A squared. Once again, we know all the quantities involved. We'll be able to calculate F net GY to be 4.002 times 10 to the negative 6 newtons. Knowing F net GX and F net GY, we'll be able to get the F net G. F net GX is negative. So F net GX is horizontal, negative direction. F net GY is positive. 
So, F net GY is vertical positive direction. Completing the rectangle, we'll be able to draw the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the F net G. Since it's the hypotenuse, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the magnitude of F net G. F net G is just equal to 4.125. 1, 6, 7, 1, 7, 8 times 10 to the negative 6 newtons. For the direction, let angle theta be based on the x-axis. This is the position of angle theta in this case is above negative x. So that basically gives you the direction. We can use tangent function to determine the exact value of angle theta. Tangent theta is opposite, so F net GY over adjacent F net GX, absolute value to get rid of any negative signs. Get the inverse tangent and you'll be able to get angle theta 75.9637565 degrees. Putting it all together, F net G is equal to 4.125 times 10 to the negative 6 newtons, 75.964 degrees above negative x. Moving now to the next example, sample problem number 2. You have an astronaut whose height is 1.7 meters Floats, seven, uh, floats feet down in an orbiting shuttle at a distance of r is equal to 6.77 times 10 to the 6 power meters from the center of the Earth. What is the difference between the gravitational attraction at the feet and at the head of the astronaut? So let h be equal to 1.7 meters. Let small r be 6.77 times 10 to the 6 power meters. Mass of the earth. Memorize ninyo, m earth is equal to 5.98 times 10 to the 24th power kilograms. And we are required to get the difference in acceleration between the feet and the head of the astronaut. Now, gravitational force between the astronaut and Earth is given by Fg is equal to Gm, mass of the astronaut, m, m Earth divided by capital R squared. Since force, Fg is still a force, second law of, new, of motion tells us Fg is just equal to ma. We can cancel out m, leaving us with a is equal to g m earth over r squared. So we are able to get the acceleration by setting the right value of capital R. For the acceleration at the feet of the astronaut, you have r foot. Let that be distance, small r. And for the head of the astronaut, from the foot to the head of the astronaut, the distance is the height of the astronaut, 1.7 meters. So, our head is just equal to our foot plus distance h plus the height of the astronaut. Comparing r, small r, and h, R is very much larger than H, which means R foot is almost similar to R head, which means if we use this to get the acceleration, there won't be any difference between the acceleration at the head and at the foot of the astronaut. Delta L, therefore, will be equal to zero. More or less, this is correct, but a more correct solution may be gotten if we go to 
the basics of calculus. If we look at dA, very, very small change in A. So, very, very small change in A. Constant times constant divided by variable capital R. So, for any very small change in A, we must have very small change in R, dr. Comparing R foot and R head, the very small difference in R foot and R head is H. So, dr, very small change in R, is just H. Differentiating A with respect to R, we get negative G, negative 2 G M earth over R cube. Transferring dr to the other side, we know G M earth R. We also know G. We are now able to calculate the very small change in A. DA is equal to negative 4.371 times 10 to the 6 power meters per second squared. So this is basically correct. Delta A is 0. But a more correct answer is DA is neg equal to negative 4.371 times 10 to the negative 6 power meters per Second. Moving now to the last example, you have sample problem number three. The weight of an object on the surface of the earth is 98 newtons. What is the weight of the same object? on a different planet. And this different planet has twice the mass of the Earth and four times the radius of the Earth. So, weight of the object on the Earth is 98 newtons. Mass of the planet is twice that of the Earth. And radius of the planet is four times that of the Earth. What is the weight of the object on the planet. Now, Fg, Earth, weight is gravitational force, so we can equate it to G, M, mass of the object, M, Earth, over R, Earth, squared. On the planet, the gravitational force is G, M, M, planet, over R, planet, squared. M planet is just twice M Earth. R planet is just four times R Earth. Don't forget, squared. So, four R Earth will give you 16 R Earth squared. Simplifying, we have one over eight G M M Earth over R Earth squared. Note, this is just equal to Fg Earth. So we can replace this by Fg Earth. So you have 1 over 8 Fg Earth. And we know Fg Earth to be 98 Newtons. So Fg planet is just equal to 98 divided by 8. We get the weight of the object on the planet. 12. Point 12.250 newtons. And that's it for our discussion of the examples part. That's it for our discussion on the topic of gravitation. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.